Good morning, friends, and welcome to another week of Bible Stories on Here With Me. I'm so glad you guys decided to join me this week, and I hope you all had an awesome week with your family, your friends, at school, whatever you did. I hope it was awesome. Okay, so this month, we're finding out how to drop the act and show others who we really are. That's what it looks like to live a life of integrity. Integrity is choosing to be truthful in whatever you say and do. We don't have to act like someone we're not. We don't have to hide um, who God made us to be. With his help, we can be brave, honest, and true. Today's Bible story is going to be from the book of 2 Kings chapter 5. Now, I'm not going to read the whole story from the Bible word for word. I'm going to put it in my own words to help you guys understand it. But what I am going to ask for you you guys to do this week is to go back through um, 2 Kings um, chapter 5 with your family or your friends or your grandparents, whoever, and just read the chapter um, of the story that we're going to have today, okay? In history of God's people, God often chose prophets who would share his words uh, for everyone to hear. Elijah was one of these prophets. There was also a king who was ruling over the Israelites at the time. Elijah had a trusted servant named Gehazi. Gehazi was trustworthy, but you'll just have to listen to the story to see how this turned out. At this time, the story took place. The kingdoms of Israel and Aram uh, were enemies. Naaman was an army commander for the king of Aram. Naaman was a brave soldier and a wealthy man, but he had a skin disease, one that no doctor was able to cure. But one day, Naaman heard from a servant girl that there was a prophet named Elijah in Israel. According to this girl, Elijah had the power to heal people. Naaman knew that if he could just get to Elijah, he could be healed. But there was a problem. Remember how I mentioned that the two kingdoms were enemies? Naaman knew that he had to get permission to go over to Israel. So he went to the king of Aram and he told them what the girl had said. The king of Aram told Naaman that he would that he should go. In fact, he gave Naaman a letter to the king of Israel asking him to heal Naaman of his skin disease. So Naaman went to see the king of Israel. He even took some expensive gifts. Naaman showed the king the letter that the king of Aram um, had given him. The king of Israel read the letter and was very upset. He thought the king of Aram was trying to pick a fight with him since he knew that he didn't have the power to heal. But Elijah had heard what had happened, and he sent a message to the king of Israel. He told the king to tell Naaman to go see him. Naaman left the king and went to see Elijah. But instead of coming out to greet Naaman, Elijah sent a messenger to deliver the, the instructions. And we're going to read those instructions um, in the book of 2 Kings, chapter 5, verse 10. It says, go, wash yourself in the Jordan River seven times. Then your skin will be healed. You will be pure and clean again. Naaman was angry because Elijah didn't come out himself to pray and heal him. But Naaman's servants convinced him to go down to the Jordan River and to do what Elijah had said. So Naaman washed in the Jordan, and sure enough, he was healed. Then Naaman went back to Elijah's house. He tried to give Elijah a gift to say thank you, but Elijah wouldn't accept the gift. Listen to what he said to Naaman. We're going to read this in the book of 2 Kings chapter 5, verse 16. I serve the Lord. You can be sure that he lives. And you can be sure, you can be just as sure that I won't accept a gift from you. Elijah wouldn't accept the gift, so Naaman headed back toward Aram. Now, do you remember Gehazi, Elijah's trusted servant? Well, Gehazi was very upset. He thought that Elijah should have accepted Naaman's gift. He figured he could go after Naaman and get something for himself. So he took off running after Naaman's chariot. When Gehazi caught up to Naaman, he lied and he told him that Elijah had asked for 75 pounds of silver and two sets of clothes. Naaman happily agreed. In fact, he actually gave Gehazi twice as much silver that he asked for. And Gehazi headed back with, to hide the gifts um, in Elijah's house. He thought that he had gotten away with his lie, but Elijah knew what he had done. Gehazi stood, up, stood before Elijah, and Elijah asked him where he had been. Gehazi lied again, and he said that he hadn't gone anywhere. 
Elijah told Gehazi that he knew the truth because his spirit had gone with Gehazi. And here's where it got really bad for Gehazi. Check out what Elijah said to him next in the book of 2 Kings chapter 5, verse 27. You and your children after you will have name and skin disease forever. What? Oh, yikes. Gehazi's lie had won him some new clothes, but it had cost him Elijah's trust. And unfortunately, he and his family ended up with Naaman's awful skin disease. Gehazi found out something that was really important that day that we need to know too. When you're not truthful, you lose trust. We want people to know that they can count on us, like our parents, our teachers, our friends, our grandparents. And we want them to know that they can believe what we have to say. But when we're not truthful, they won't be able to trust us. Let's go ahead and close in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this awesome story that we had today and for the reminder that we do need to um, seek, speak truth and to try not to lie and, um, and just listen to what your word says, Lord. Please help us throughout this week um, and let us be truthful to our friends, our family, um, and to ourselves, Lord. And please just bless each and every one of these families who are watching and those who are not watching, Lord. Please put your hand over top of them, protect them throughout the rest of the week, and just thank you for everything that you do. And thank you for always loving us. In God's name we pray, amen. Thank you guys so much for watching another Bible Stories on here with me. And I hope to see you all at the kids' worship today. Bye.